The sins for this game start as soon as you realize you paid $60 for a Cops and Robbers reskin of Battlefield 4. The fact that you have to launch this game from your browser. Because Origin. Also Origin. EA. <laughs> I remember when Battlefield games started with sweeping orchestral music. Then they started starting with dubstep. In this game it's all dub, no step, and with some explosions for good measure. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the beast. This song. Gaze upon this fine country of ours while you can, gentlemen. It's gonna be your last decent view for a long while. Do corrections officers really do this? Wouldn't it get boring after the first couple times? Unless you get off sexually on reminding prisoners of their predicament, there's really no point. And I'm willing to bet the number of people who get off on public sector jobs is pretty low. Nicholas Mendoza. Holy shit, you guys actually used the name The Simpsons were making fun of for being a stereotype in cop movies back in the 90s? Mendoza! You uh, might want to secure that weapon, deputy, before one of these gentlemen takes it off you. All of the prisoners are chained by their feet and hands. How do you figure any of them could do that? Unless you've already read the script and know that this is just a lead up to some class of escape scene bullshit. I always enjoy seeing dirty cops end up on my bus. It reminds me, the system works. Exposition through both irony and antagonism. Enjoy the ride, detective. Shit, dude, did you have to say that? Now he's gonna flash back to when he was a cop. And there he goes. Thanks a lot, asshole. It shouldn't take very long. What do you say we bag these guys and go grab some lunch? There's Travis Willingham playing a cop again. Considering they use his likeness for all these cop roles he plays, he has truly become the most typecast digital actor. I know a decent Cuban place around the corner. Cuban? Jesus Christ, Nick, you're in Vice now. Why do you afford better than beans and rice? Let's talk loudly about lunch right outside the door the heavily armed drug dealers were about to bust. What could go wrong? Nick knocks on his door with his gun while pointing it in his partner's direction. Police! Howdy, fuck you, get your These guys were sitting on the other side of the door the two cops were just discussing lunch outside of, and they all have guns sitting on the table in front of them. The two cops should have been greeted with a hail of bullets. This is a fucking joke. I'll be out by the morning, cop. You fucking know it. You have bricks of cocaine and piles of money on the table. You are way overconfident for someone in your situation. Otherwise. Fuck you! Yeah! Oh, I see someone on the development team is a big fan of Pulp Fiction, since this scene comes straight from it. Which means even though you didn't have a glowing briefcase, you reminded me of much better entertainment I could be watching. Too bad there's nobody left to interrogate. Hey, I was tired of burgers, so I got Cuban. By the power of entertainment irony, when you say a line like that, a convenient answer will present itself. Hey, I was tired of burgers, so I got Cuban. Guy just so happens to be delivering Cuban food, which is what Nick and Stoddard were discussing before kicking down the door. Nick and Stoddard were on the second floor watching a perp get into a car and tear ass onto the highway. Yet one cut later and the two of them were getting into their own squad car and right behind the guy. 80s cop car hood slide. <laughs> That's a crash you don't survive if you're not wearing a seatbelt, which this guy wasn't. At the very least, he should have been thrown out the windshield. This is an ongoing investigation. So no comment, Captain? This is an ongoing investigation. That is my comment. No comment would be no comment. Where the hell is everybody? Was that happening live right outside this office? That's kind of unheard of for non-press conferences. Usually that would just be recorded and edited later. Oh, drug war, sir. Saw it on TV. It's like the 80s all over again. In fact, I'm gonna wear a white linen suit with the sleeves pushed up with a pink t-shirt. Admitting that your game is just as cliche as cop dramas from the 80s does not excuse it from being as cliche as cop dramas from the 80s. Sir, Mendoza's last run in the field, no offense, was a total clusterfuck. And there's Kelly Hugh. Last time I saw her, she was playing a police detective in Sleeping Dogs. Did they hire every voice actor with past experience playing cops for this game or something? That's the same face I make whenever I ask logical questions about the games I'm playing for these videos. Welcome to my world, pal. It's a strange place full of magical reasoning. So what's the story with Tyson Latchford? This coke's for the rich and the clueless. This game now feels like watching an episode of Cops. Hey, how about, how about, uh, just let me get, uh, let me get like five dollars. Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, it's just, um, I'm, I'm what you call a capitalist. Racism. For real this time. Hey, Guzman. Who you got there? It's our old pal Hulks. Miami is a pretty big place, so I find it a little strange that Kai and Nick would just drive a few blocks from the police station and come across the very guy they set out to look for already being arrested. Like this guy, Zeno. Scientology jokes? Feels like I clicked on the wrong subreddit and ended up in our atheism. You her new partner? She do that karate for you yet. That's... That's pretty racist too. This game is getting a lot of mileage out of that. I study Krav Maga, karate's mystical bullshit. I'm not the person to debate the effectiveness of karate. I'm just a guy who plays Street Fighter from time to time. But I do know it's pretty grounded in reality, unlike say yoga, which I'm assuming is what you meant. Either way, stupid line. Above my pay grade, Fidel. More racism. 
swear you cops get off on this shit. Yeah, at first. Then you just get bored. Funny, I said the same exact thing about this at the beginning. I know you got warrants. I know you keep your coke around the corner under the dumpster. I know little man who just ran off is probably moving it right now. How do you know all of that? You didn't even know who he was before your partner introduced him. The stealth gameplay of this game has you cuffing guys with an infinite supply of handcuffs. That's fine and all, but is there any reason why the guys you cuff don't yell a warning to their friends that there's a cop here? There's no start menu button on the desktop of this guy's computer, which means he's using Windows 8. Tell us where you are. We can protect you. Sorry, but I doubt that. Damn it. Now what? Tyson's dead if we don't get to him first. CP, this is 13. We need a trace route on an outgoing IP connection. I question the police force's ability to trace an internet connection in just a few minutes. And why would Kai just be carrying around a tracing device? She had no idea she was going to be talking to Tyson through a video chat. And if Tyson was using video chat to protect himself from those who want to kill him, wouldn't the first thing he would do is use an onion router? Also, that's Adam Harrington who played a cop in L.A. Noir. He's not playing a cop in this game. Good for him. <laughs> You know you need a warrant for that. Here, answer the door while eating this apple to look like more of an asshole. We're not here to arrest you. You need to go now. You're not? He's the guy selling the drugs that you're looking for. We specifically came out tonight to find this guy and bring him in. Who's he? Found him on the way to the zoo. Said he wanted to see something endangered. I just want to point out that giving female characters all the supposed cool lines you use in the trailers doesn't exactly make them into good characters. Case in point, Kai. Give me the bag, Leo. Or I'm gonna shoot this guy. Normally I'd say that doesn't sound like something a cop should be saying, but hell, I watch the news like everyone else. Leo, Jesus! That makes secret meeting number two that's been interrupted by gunmen. You sure like time? Hey. Oh. Kai! Not another fucking word Kai. about my badge! Stop it! Jaws. Anything! Normally I'd say this is pretty wildly unlikely of police as well, but hey, again, news. Check the offices upstairs! Shit. I really hate it when off-screen characters yell at something just so the main characters can overhear it. Especially when the one sentence is all that is overheard. Realistically, you would hear them yelling a lot more stuff. Every single one of these guys somehow knew that Kai, Nick, and Leo escaped in this truck, and not only managed to get ahead of them, but set up roadblocks as well. There are going to be some complaints about the Elmore. Excessive force, etc., etc. Don't worry about it. I'll handle it. There's got to be two dozen dead guys back there, not to mention the chase on the causeway. You're going to need more than one press conference to smooth things over. How's your mother, detective? Sorry, sir. Your mother? I'm sure she went through a lot to get you out of Cuba. <laughs> you don't become a detective, especially at your age, without a thorough background check. And Cuba is well known for working with American police when it comes to information gathering. Aren't the Everglades a little outside the jurisdiction of Miami cops? Shouldn't this be a federal case now? A lot of gators out here. Yeah, I wouldn't sweat it. They're more afraid of us than we are of them. That's a line that demands something ironic happen. <laughs> and there's the payoff. Also, why did Nick have to wade out to the drug bail to tag it? Kai was shooting the bales with tracking darts a moment ago. Also, a quick time event. <laughs> See? That's much more effective at making Kai look like a badass than having her spot dry action movie lines that would sound bad even coming out of a guy's mouth. Also, good thing Kai brought her crocodile Dundee knife with her today. Though that only makes me wonder why she didn't use her gun. More afraid of us than we are of them, huh? Just in case you missed how ironic that scene was, here's Kai parroting the line back to Nick. Holy shit, a pager. Here, talk to them. Can't get Tommy. No! Hey, yeah, yeah, it's all good. I'm here. Who the fuck is this? It's Antonio. Your accent changed between those two sentences. Whatever else you want. What the hell was that, Stoddard? Looks like I just saved your life, Mendoza. He was surrendering. Leave it alone, partner. Listen to your partner. She's a smart lady. Here, before evidence arrives. You're kidding. There you go, Nick. Congrats on a job well done. Smart lady. Now I see why. Yeah, it's totally surprising that Kai is a dirty cop. I mean, you only saw her beating Leo, agreeing to cover up the beating of Leo, and she admitted to having dated Tyson, a drug dealer. Hell, I'm more surprised that Travis Willingham gets to play a different kind of cop for the once. That was the Honorable Naomi Kushner. And what do we think about Judge Kushner around these parts? Left-wing hack. If anyone wanted proof that Battlefield games and games like it glorify a conservative viewpoint, well, there you go. He didn't take the money. <laughs> you were testing me. Way to ruin a potentially interesting conflict not two minutes after introducing it. By the way, Stoddard murdered a man right in front of Nick. You want to go arrest him by any chance now that you're done testing Nick to see if he's a dirty cop? No. You said that Nels was talking about a deal with Stoddard. 
Yeah, he sure did. Well, I need you to go back to Nelts' office and get me something I can take to Internal Affairs. To Internal Affairs, you have two eyewitnesses, both police detectives, who witnessed Stoddard murder a man and take money from the crime scene. Jesus! I lived in Florida as a kid, so I can tell you from experience that if hurricane wind is strong enough to keep your car door from opening, it's strong enough to blow your car over. Look, we find anything, we go directly to Dawes. This goes to internal affairs. Dawes can't control what happens. Again, why do you need to? Murder one, removing evidence from a crime scene? Remember, any of this ringing a bell? A start is dirty. You know it, I know it. Gee, I wonder how you know that with such certainty. Well, you opened the door no problem that time. Didn't even look difficult. The CSI team just left all these dead bodies lying around after Nick and Kai swept through a few days ago. I know Nick can see which numbers are part of the combination due to fingerprints, but he got the four digit code right on the first try. There are 24 possible combinations here, and that's discounting the possibility that one number is used twice. If it's a five-digit code, then you have 120 possible combinations. Sounds like the next step is coming up with partnership terms that work for both of us. I think if you... Stoddard. Got you. Yeah, that recorded meeting Stoddard had with the man you saw him kill is the final nail in his coffin. What'd you find? Nelson Stoddard. On tape. Now when we go to IA, it's not our word against his. It wouldn't have been in the first place. He shot that man with his own gun. Ballistics evidence, people. Remy was storing his cash somewhere. I bet Stoddard's looking for it too. Look in there. Is it the plot? I bet it's the plot. But I looked online and the only place that sells that crap is a store called Domo Robato in the Popcorn Mall. He wouldn't be storing his cash there. Nope. That's why I got the warehouse's address. You found a plushie in a warehouse, so obviously that must have some connection to where the guy stores his money. Seems like a solid lead to me. Wow, you are horrible at this. Put your gun down. How about I just holster? Drop the goddamn gun, Nick! Why didn't you do this the first goddamn time? Crowbar loading gates. I had a lot of faith that you would find the last conclusive piece. And you did. Thank you. What the fuck? Fuck you. Nick, don't. IA is going to find a stack of cash back at your apartment. $33,000, in fact. The exact sum that Nels moved in his last transfer, so... The question, of course, will be... What did you do with the rest of it, detective? So first you guys tried to bring Nick into your dirty cop club for... some reason. Then you pretended to just be testing him to see if he was a dirty cop, only to double-cross him and pin it all on him after he collected the evidence against you. I'm not sure if I should label this one an indie ploy or a Xanatos gambit. Have to double-check TV tropes with that one. Nick, we tried! I was so certain that we would find a place for you with us. But no. You're convinced that you're just one of the good guys. Normally when you're running a ring of crooked cops, it's best to not bring in new people. I mean, you did a background check on him. What end it made you think Nick would be down for this? God damn it, shut up! Racism. This game just can't help itself. <laughs> Any explosion powerful enough to throw you out of a bus is also powerful enough to kill you. In fact, that's the most likely outcome. You don't want to know how long I've had this key. And you definitely don't want to know where it's been. I'm guessing up your ass for five long years. Yeah, you've only been incarcerated for three, but since you're using another thing from Pulp Fiction, you might as well go all the way. Where are you going? Dude! Rob the fucking English. <laughs> That is so racist. You can tell Nick is a hard man by his time in prison because stubble. Think about it. He put me out of business. He locked you up. Eventually he fucked her over too. You're about the only one we can trust. Hasn't she already fooled you once and put you in prison for three years? But now you're going to team up with her because Dawes screwed her over? She still left you to rot until she needed you. Now I've been a police officer my entire adult life. And as much as it pains me to admit it, I've come to realize that the way we do police work, especially drug enforcement, is dangerously outdated. With your investment, together we can forge the new future of law enforcement. I don't know, guy. I think your Kickstarter pitch video is a little weak. Don't think you're going to get funded. An angel investor pitch video. You ever heard of preferred outcomes? Sounds a lot like the real-life PMC executive outcomes, but I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Come on, guys. Before you were at least differentiating enough to not completely rip off Quentin Tarantino, but the whole inside-the-trunk camera angle, you should know better. <laughs> This must be that Levolution stuff I've heard of. Wait, where's the kid? No idea. Looks like he split. I want my laptop. That guy was not in the back seat before Nick got in. I checked. Suddenly I'm getting Half-Life 2 flashbacks. You do not want me thinking of Half-Life 2 while playing your mediocre FPS. Every single crook in town knew exactly which way these guys were headed even though they themselves were just winging it. And they got ahead of them to boot. <laughs>
And now I'm getting Fast and Furious flashbacks. Okay, that was awesome. So awesome that I waited until we drove several miles before stating how awesome it was. So you're gonna update us or oh, what? You really want me to explain to you the super technical stuff I'm doing right now? No, but that was just dialogue code that you'll tell us something important in the next few seconds. Probably starting with the line, here's something, or take a look at this. Well, here's something. Hey, I can back up. There's a guy who yells important details so people can overhear it again, thus explaining away potential plot holes. What is this abomination of a controller? This is a game made by devs who should know what a controller looks like. You call that modern art? If we get this phone into one of those briefcases, we can track it. Pretty sure the battery will die in that phone before it gets to wherever it's going for you to track the GPS signal. Obviously, you have no idea who I am because if you did, you would not be stealing from me. You know, I sat here for several minutes trying to come up with a reason as to why you'd have such a big TV above your bed, and nothing came to me. I guess it's just there so you can surprise people breaking into your house. You look Mexican, so I'll assume you're a burglar. That's racist. For real this time. Your little tracker scheme worked? Now right here, this is where Kai's phone wound up. Dawes' corporate HQ. I mean, the place is a beast. We're talking private elevators, blast-resistant windows. Wait, I know that building. That's right on Foster Key off mainland Miami. Considering that bedroom was shot all to hell and he saw you putting the phone in the briefcase, there's no way this plan should have worked. And that's not even considering the phone battery lasting the trip from L.A. to Miami. Look, you try getting a straight job with a dishonorable discharge on your record during a recession. It's a long story, man. I went AWOL. For how long? Technically, I'm still at wall. Then you haven't been dishonorably discharged yet. Nick Mendoza, right? Oh, hey, look at that. Shit just got real. Yeah, that's a line I didn't expect to ever hear in any piece of entertainment that wants to be taken seriously. Oh, and Marcus, just so we're clear, race is not a factor here. My dislike of you is strictly personal. That would be much easier to swallow if it weren't for all the other examples of mild racism in this game. The guy Nick just killed only dropped one gun, which he picked up. So where did Marcus get one? Dooney, why'd you let your dad lure us into a trap? I assumed Nick was just one of your dirtbag friends, but then I found out he's a cop, which is kind of worse, but whatever. That makes two women in this game who have fucked Nick over only to need his help afterward. And that makes the fourth car wreck in this game. That shot in the arm. Yeah, my leg's broken. You were walking really well for someone who just broke a leg. One bandage around the knee, that's exactly how you treat a broken bone. I just want to point out that in a game about cops and drug dealers, I fired a cannon from inside a C-130 gunship and drove a tank to fight another tank plus attack helicopters. What the fuck is that hiss- The air slowly leaking out of this franchise. After a successful breach and clear, you're supposed to go in shooting. Instead, these two just awkwardly stand there until the effect wears off and are shot. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. You can hide from me, Mendoza! I taught you everything you know! No, you didn't. You worked with him exactly one time before he was partnered with Kai. How did Tyson get outside the door to be taken hostage by Stoddard? He was in the room when the door was breached and was blown back by it. Damn it, shoot this prank! Uh, gun jam. That's some bad luck. Gun jam at the worst possible moment cliche. Even Stoddard calls it out. Wait, what are you doing? Dawes is gonna probably want an update. I'm sending him one. What better way to lose the element of surprise that you had than by sending Dawes a photo of a very dead Stoddard? I haven't seen foresight like this since Aragorn convinced Theoden to let Wormtongue live. So the plan to get into Daw's penthouse was to flood the elevator shaft and swim up and open the door? I don't really want to question this too much since this is a special pearl of stupid and I don't want to destroy it. But isn't going up what an elevator already does and does well? Get back! He's alive! Blackness saved him. Tyson survives this because Flag Jacket. Sure, that can stop shrapnel. How that stopped the pressure wave from liquefying his insides? Mm, I don't know. I think it goes without saying that this falling off a zip line slash helicopter scene deserves five more sins. You realize this is a trap, right? Of course it's a trap. It's a trap? Of course it's a trap cliche. You see, I think you finally figured out who you really are. You're just like me. More criminal than cop. You know what? You're right. I always like it when the villain just gives up at the end and basically lets the main character kill them. Who needs a climax? How's your mother, Nick? The villain repeats line he said earlier, only now it's ironic. What I've built can't be taken apart. There's too much at stake. Too many lives and reputations. So congratulations, detective. It's all yours. Sequel dating. Hey, look at that. Shit just got real.